I'm not sure what your personal experience is, but I know I've had just a few times when marital or workplace bliss is in jeopardy due to the simple act of hanging pictures or other wall decor. It's not really about where things should go. It's trying to hang things in a straight line. As a matter of fact, I've heard even professional galleries try to never hang things in a straight line. It just never works, and if it does, it takes far more effort than it should. The reason this is so important is there is a symmetry and a harmony when things follow lines. Our eye is drawn to lines and along them. If they are not completely straight, though, they look disheveled and out of place, even if it's just by a little bit. As is usually the case, basic art and design principles apply to PowerPoint slides as well. If we're going to have multiple objects on a slide, they either need to be specifically placed so as not to look like they are supposed to line up, or they'd better line up. PowerPoint 2013 offers smart guides as we drag items to help us align them, but a more traditional feature can be put into place that's available regardless of the method we choose to place and move items, as well as when we're just surveying our slide without moving anything at all. They're known as grids and guides. Since they are something we want to see or view on our slides, they are found in the View tab. Hopefully that will help you know where to find them. If we select the View tab, we can then move to the Show group, and we actually see three checkboxes. One turns the ruler on and off. If you want to know precise measurements, this may be helpful. Then we see the two that we're talking about here, which are grid lines and guides. Grid lines display in the background and allow us to align a variety of items to the grid. We can enable or disable them by simply using the checkbox on the ribbon. Or we can also use the keyboard shortcut, which is Shift F9. We notice that a dotted grid appears on the slide when it's actually enabled. This is what we can use for placement. For a moment, we'll go ahead and turn the grid lines off and turn the guides on. We can also align objects to guides, but guides are adjustable and grid lines are not. When guides are enabled with the checkbox, one vertical and one horizontal guide displays on the slide. We can see them here. The difference is we can move these. Notice if we pause over them, we get the double-headed arrow, kind of the same one that we get when we're resizing a window. We can then press and hold our left mouse button, and we can drag it to where we want it to go. The same is true with the vertical guide. Let's say that we want to place images on several slides at the same location in the lower right corner. We can place the guides like we've done here so that we can always put the bottom right corner of the image at the intersection of the guides. It doesn't matter how big the actual picture is, they will all be aligned correctly and accurately as well as consistently on the slide if we use the guides in this way. Let's go ahead and test it out by dragging the moon over to the guides. Now I know it's hard to tell when you're just watching something on a screen, but when we got within one pixel of each of the guides, the moon actually snapped to the guide. First, it snapped to the horizontal guide at the bottom, and then, as we continued to drag to the right, it snapped to the vertical guide on the right-hand side. This makes alignment a snap. That pun was definitely intended on that one. But, as is usually the case with Microsoft products, we're saying to ourselves, oh, there's got to be more to it than that, more than just quick, simple checkboxes. And we'd be right. If we move back up to the ribbon, With the View tab selected, and we click the Dialog Box Launcher in the Show group, it brings up the Grid and Guides dialog box, where we can actually modify or set how we want these to work. The first is, do we want things to snap to the grid? We can say yes, or we can say no. We can also designate how we want the grid configured. We can choose spacing in fractions of inches, for example, 1 16th, 1 12th, 1 8th, 1 4th. Let's go ahead and say, one inch. We also could do the same thing by using the spinner box on the right. The spinner box allows us to select a specific measurement in inches. The last checkbox is if we want to display the grid on screen. This is exactly the same as the one that we have from the ribbon. So we'd never come into this window just to turn it on or off, but if we happen to be here, we could say, go ahead and turn it on. The guide settings at the very bottom include just two checkboxes. Like the last option for the grid above, the first checkbox for guides is whether to turn them on or off. We currently had them on, so the box is checked. The second checkbox is whether we want to display smart guides when shapes are aligned. Generally, we think this is a good idea, but if for some reason you don't like those little red lines cluttering up your screen while you drag, then you can turn those off as well. 
If we like these settings, we can click the Save as Default to do just that. That way, these will become the default settings for grid lines and guides in all of our presentations. That means we won't have to configure them again. Now we can see there is definitely a difference between the grid lines that we had initially and the ones we have now. We made them much larger, spaced much farther apart, in this case, one inch. This one I kind of like. Sometimes I have to admit the other one gets to be a little annoying and sometimes in the way. So remember, your grid lines can be configured any way you want. In addition, we also still have our guides. In my experience, most people have a preference one way or another about grids and guides, as well as having items snap automatically to them. So chances are, once you play with them a bit, you'll find your preference and be able to set them as the default. Whether they are automatically set or you change them for a specific presentation, grids and guides are unobtrusive tools that we can use to ensure that our objects align to our slides, look sharp, and professionally arranged.